A ticking time bomb, the Amaldiri issue, can no longer be swept under the carpet. It has become a national security issue and still on security. Where does the DSS draw the line between peaceful protest and court syndicated plots? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Barry Anako. Well, the DSS and the allegation of planned attacks. Welcome to Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Now, um, we hear that the State Department, the State Security Services actually have uncovered syndicated plots by some undesirable groups to cause a breakdown of law and order in various parts of the country, including Abuja. The arrangement, according to them, is to instigate protests, mass action and violence with the view of causing anarchy and destabilizing the country. So is this another ploy to stop citizens from expressing discomfort or is it a true national concern? Well, I have in the studio my guest. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Dayo Kayade. He is a political technocrat. And we have Dr. Alari Bibe. He is a political analyst. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Hi, how are you? Okay. I I I'm going to start with you, um, Dr. We know that the state security service, or now the department, uh, you know, yes. So we know that they are the most secret of services, you know. They handle intel very well, maybe better than the police or any other uh, security agency that we have in the country. But for this bomb, permit me to use that word loosely here, to be dropped on us, do you think that it really was a security concern, hence the reason why? this had to be issued as a red alert? Yes, I would say thumbs up for DSS, you know, because it's a serious organization, like you've said. You see, they, they had to clandestine, covert, and all those kind of things. You know? So, you see, for them to come out with that statement, they must have some very good intelligence of mm -hmm. them, you know, that can make them say something, because they are not frivolous. So, I, it's, it's something serious. Just, where, where I just don't fall in line with them is when you have that kind of intel, I will, you know, be proactive and, you know, curtail all the big uh, weeks behind that kind of situation before bringing it out to the public because now you're going to give them a chance to escape, you know. Interestingly, I would like to go into the text of this report by the DSS. Now, they talked about a group of persons some undesirable groups who are planning to break down law and order in different parts of the country, including Abuja. And the first thing is arrangements to instigate protests. Let's start with protests. Recently, protests have been somewhat uh, do it at your own risk kind of thing now in Nigeria. It's either you, get, you stand at risk of getting shot at or you're pepper sprayed or you're arrested. So why did this message have to start with protests? Um, I want to first of all pick up two statements of weight or weights that you used just now. Number one, I don't think, yes, they call them DSS. I don't think they are more intelligent than the police because the police too has a section of V that deals with that. That's one. Two, then when you're talking now, when you talk just now as regards protests, are people not eligible to protest again then when you are now talking about bomb that that kind of statement dss is making are they looking at a kind of protest that was carried out by el zazaki's people because we need to look at their statement i mean i'm not somebody that will just take a statement the way it is because we know the kind of government that we have now. We know the kind of government that we have been But having. have we had lately any protest that was really peaceful? I mean, for, for goodness asking. sake, which, which protests have we had that have not been peaceful? Even the one that happened during Jonathan Zera, the one that there was organized at Toyota along the uh, Kurodu Road and all that. Peaceful, peaceful protest. The one, but there the, were, there were poli the policemen shot at people during the 
knows that, exactly that, that is another we lost a police commissioner we lost a youth copper who was working for um channels television recently also the els exactly group had another protest that is another and ball someone, game a child was got I'm just saying, I, I'm, yeah. I'm playing the devil's advocate Yeah, because, because even, even when you listen to all those people, the police were the one, according to them, the story we, we had, because those guys are also interviewed. And even I personally, I have run into their process before in Abuja. All right? As I, I was a, 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 a lighting like this from, from, from uh, uh, a particular uh, uh, taxi, I ran into them around Bega area in Abuja under that bridge. All right. Now they said the police, but don't let us go into that so that we don't move away from this DSS thing. Now, if DSS has uncovered some people that were about to protest or causing anarchy in the country. Have they been able to question those people? Why? They, because if you have uncovered something, definitely you will know one, two, three people well, that are involved. Well, I think that's what Dotson was referring to. You should to. have been able to question them. That is one. Two, the situation and the kind of signals we are having in this country. Is it not, is it not, is it not going towards anarchical society whereby you are saying look you cannot i'm trying to understand do this. Di dr dio are you saying that indeed nigerians are going to protest are you saying that the dss is speaking about us the ordinary nigerians uh, protesting but, or they, they have try, they're just oh. trying to mvc they are trying to go ahead of what is about to happen because they know what the government is saying how can you say? What exactly is the government saying? How, how can you say? How can you? How can you say people cannot say any? Cannot talk again on 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 on, on social media? How are you say you want to be killing people because of hate speech? And you are not killing kidnappers. And you are, you are not killing headsmen. You, you are not arresting them to kill people that are that are causing a lot of mayhem in the society. All right, just hold that thought. Uh, back to you, Dr. Um, there are people who are. I mean, this message hits different people differently. There are people who are saying two or three men are in custody illegally, even after court orders. And these people are saying maybe what the DSS is um, referring to is the fact that if these people are still not released, there might be protests as they had earlier on right across the country. Could this be what the DSS is referring to as a mass action and violence with the view of causing anarchy and destabilizing the country? Or could it be something else entirely different? I, by my own security training, I like to believe it's something else entirely. I, I don't think it has anything to do with uh, the two or three guys in detention. You see, it's, it's intelligence gathering, you know. Yes, we agree, like I was saying, we live in a lawless society. I have a right to protest. What do I aim to achieve by my protest? You know what I mean? El Zake Zake protest is a different ball game in town. You know what I mean? This are, I mean, it's, it's a different ball game. It's different from what DSS is saying now. You know, what I mean? DSS is talking about instigating the public. You know, with a facade of um, masquerading it as a protest to cause certain specific objectives and ends. That's what they're talking about. Are you also saying or insinuating that Nigerians do not have the uh, one thought to understand when someone is trying to play on their intelligence. For example, if there is no reason for you to protest or if there, no, if there is no ill in society, what would anybody tell you that would convince you to hit the streets and, of course, um, take advantage of that hitting the streets to become a violent protest? You see, don't let's take it away. I mean, there are people that are experts in doing that. They can deceive you into coming out. That's what I'm saying. You have to know the reason why you want to go and protest. So if there's no reason to go and protest and somebody's trying to lure you, maybe you want, they want to pay you or whatever, it's going to fizzle out anyway you look at but it. But that's, that's the question I'm asking. But, do we have problems or do we not have problems in this country that are worth us going out to protest? Every society has problems. And it's our right to protest. 
you know. So I mean, that's I still come back to it. It depends on what I want to protest for. There are problems everywhere. Now the DSS has also said that those actions who, which they describe as predetermined uh, have been designed to take place simultaneously in major cities across the geopolitical zones in the coming weeks. I mean, it could be next week, it could be the week after. Uh, uh, th they say this is more so that plotters are also targeting the Yuletide seasons to accomplish their sinister motives. But then they're also giving an advisory. Parents are advised to rein the awards in and join them not to allow themselves to be used to foment trouble. Similarly, heads of academic and public institutions are to warn their students and employees, respectively, engaging in any untold activity against public order. Yes, sorry. You see, like, intelligence gathering is the strongest function of security. So if you have that kind of intel, you need to be proactive with it. You need to act, act upon it. You don't take that intel and then sit down. You need to go after those masterminds of whatever, you know what I mean? You, you nip it in the bud. But could this also mean that we, may, even if we had reasons to protest, we could not protest? My, you see, my take on this is this. Hmm? Was it not yesterday that some people from uh, Shores village, some women, went to protest against detention of Shore? Two. People like Professor Wale Shoyinga and some others, Femi Falano, have been talking about continual detention of Shogure. All right? And uh, I think Bakari also. That is on one side. People have also been talking that, look, there is no how you can gag up the press. There is no how you can shut our mouth up. Let me ask you this question. Is it possible for you to stop the, the bird from flying in the sky? No. Right? Well, you can shoot it but down. But you can't. No, not shoot but it that's down. that's animal cruelty. But you can prevent that bird from perching on your head. Go to, go to this place, uh, Trafagaskia in London, and then carry all those pigeon this in on your head. You will see them perching on your head. So it is you that have invited them to come and perch on your head. Okay. If the society, if the government, if the leaders have been doing the right thing, if there have been rule of law, if there have been equity, if there have been justice, then yes, there could be protests, but it wouldn't be in the kind of the one they are describing. I wouldn't know one who wants to protest, but the way they are describing it is as if they are preempting some people. All right. Based on what they are doing. All right. We earlier yesterday I spoke with a uh, security analyst, um, Mr. Uh, Daniela Macri, and of course uh, this is what he had to say. And joining us live in the studio is a security expert, Mr. Dennis Macri, to analyze this. Good morning. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. Uh, yes. So uh, it's scary to hear this, but again. I always like to poke holes in stories when I hear them, tear them apart, and then see if there be anything that... Um, the Yuletide season, we all know that we see all kinds of things. Petty theft, we see insecurity, we hear about, you know, ritual killings and all of that. Could this also be just one of those things, or is this something we should be really worried about? Well, uh, the whole um, alert is not designed to scare anybody is to make people be prepared, you know, um, of what is possibly going to happen. Um, uh, yeah, we know the Yuletide is usually filled with all kinds of uh, highway robberies and petty thefts and stuff like that, you know, but uh, this particular one uh, involves national security, whereby uh, certain people want to uh, make the country ungovernable because they feel that uh, things are not going the way they want it to go. So yeah, the, the uh, state security service actually is coming up to uh, alert the country so that they will know um, that this is what is going on and uh, be watchful too because you know in security uh, it's not just the security agencies we are all the security people of this country mm -hmm. and what you see and what you can tell you mm -hmm. know could actually bust you know uh, a threat yeah but i'm wondering why is it necessary for because you're saying it's in 
it's for national security and it's yes. also in our interest. Why is it necessary for DSS to raise this red alert when it could have just gone ahead to arrest or quietly do, you know, its digging and investigations? Don't you think this is going to um, cause some fear to go through the hearts of a lot of Nigerians and then one way or the other panic is going to spread? You know, um, recently it has come to uh, our national forum where people believe that uh, the state security service is having a strong hand tactics on certain things, you know, when uh, you have uh, people who are being subversive when they're arrested and they will come to SSS and say, oh, release them. And, uh, you know, so people believe that uh, the SSS is trying to be uh, using strong hand tactics. Uh, this is a democracy. We are not in a military regime, you know, and that's what many people don't understand. The SSS, by far, is trying to make sure that it, it uh, conforms with uh, democratic uh, uh, situations. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not only just the uh, SSS, uh, even the FBI, you know, will always tell people that beware, you know. Even in Nigeria here, yeah, when there is election going to come up, uh, the, the United States uh, FBI will uh, inform multinationals where their people are working that be, be very, very cautious of what is going to happen, likely to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, this is just something like an advisory mm -hmm. that uh, the, the SSS is using. So today, the president unveiled National Security Strategy 2019. Can you tell us what you think about this strategy and how workable it is? Yeah, it is something that... Um, we have been worried about, myself personally, not the service. The mm -hmm. service might be worried about it, but uh, as a Nigerian, I've been worried about it because um, we have to, as a country, you know, have to have a national interest, you know, and that national interest will be hooked on the national security strategy that we have, you know, because you have to have a problem, there will be a threat, and then the way you go about solving that threat will be your strategy. Okay, so okay. Um, it is very, very good that uh, they've reviewed the one in 2014 mm -hmm. and then, of course, come up with this uh, new one whereby um, it is even more looking towards the human mm -hmm. because we've always, you know, remember that Nigeria has gone through a lot of years of military rule. I think one that, last question before I let you go, sir. Um, you talked about national interests before yeah. national security. Mm -hmm. I remember sometime last year at the NBA conference when Mr. President did say that uh, there will be a time, in fact, that now national security can be, can pass over the head of the rule of law. So it comes, it, it's more prioritized over mm -hmm. the rule of law, but you yes. cannot have anything happen in a country without the rule of law. So you're talking about this again. What is the, in the interest of the people, and is it in alliance with the law, or we're just going to go ahead and do whatever the Department of State thinks is okay, or is it national interest? Well, one thing we have to understand is that national interest is not outside the rule of law. It's not outside the rule of law. But the president said the rule you of know, law could be set aside. No, he said there are certain security. situations. Certain situations. But should there be any such case? Because I'll, the I'll law... Give you, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. If somebody has been arrested for treason, for instance, I think we have a case right now. You know, if somebody has been arrested for treason, you have a case right now. And... If from investigations they discover that this particular case is more deeper than what people are seeing, you know, and it affects the national interest, that the, 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 the bail, which is the rule of law you're talking about, the bail that has been given to such a person can be put on hold, you know, so Under that... Under what law? Under what law? Because you're saying you see, but then a, a country is governed by rules and regulations. Of which course, is it's governed by rules and regulations. And if you think, because you have a hunch as a security person, that this it's thing is going to be bigger... Remember, remember, and I think that's a big mistake that many people are doing. It is not the security department that is projecting this. It is the executive, the government, 
uh, and the government is what? The federal government, the executive arm, or is it the judiciary? The executive, the executive arm of government. Who is okay? subject to the law. Of course. Even the judiciary is subject to the law. Exactly. So, you know, they are, if, if the executive and the judiciary are not in sync, whereby, you know, they are going on different ways, I think it is their business to come back together. All right, but when you now start to bring in the security agencies, the security agencies are very, very apolitical, very, very. That's why the security agencies will be there when this government goes away, you know, and the next government comes. They've served the PDP government, now they are serving the APC government, and tomorrow they can serve the ABC government or whatever government that comes in place. You didn't really okay. answer my question, but I want to say thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Dennis and Macri. I think this is something security agents do, but thank you for speaking with us. All right, uh, gentlemen, I don't want to ask too many questions, but I asked him, the last thing he said was they have served government A and government B. Is it the governments that need to be served or us, the people? Yes. You see, uh, from what he just said, I just make one, two, three statements, that, and that'll be all. Number one, there's a postulation I will make. We are not in a democratic we are not in the democratic setting at all. How do you mean? We Nigeria is not practicing democracy now. Rather, we are practicing civil rule. We just celebrated how many civil years of rule. democracy? We are practicing civil rule because there is no justice, there is no equity. As regards what it is supposed to be in democracy. Look at our constitution. Look at all that is happening all around. Some people are bigger than some other people. Let's leave that. Two, I was amazed that he said, you have served APC, you have served uh, 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 PDP. Behind the scene, remember what you just said. Are we supposed to have, I mean, are, are we supposed to have strong people or strong institutions? But if you look at Nigeria now, we're having strong people, not strong institutions. And that's why he's saying DSS has served APC and they have served PDP. That is to say, when they were serving PDP, PDP was dictating the tune. Now, APC is also dictating the tune. And that's why he can say that this thing is not from uh, uh, DSS, but from the executive. That is, it is what? It is what? The government is blowing into the trumpet called DSS, that DSS is now coming out with. Okay, Dotson, what did you take from that conversation I had with the uh, security expert? Uh, the guy lost me when he said, uh, whatever is happening is coming from the executive. So I would have thought it was the duty of the DSS to, I mean, be on ground for national security interests. I mean, see all the threats and how to nip in the board, but he's saying something different now, you know. And we are not serving PDP government or APC government. We you are serving people. Nigeria, you know. Your, your duty is to Nigeria, not to the PDP government or the APC government. So those are the places I'm not in sync with him. But, but in, the, in all of this conversation that we've had today, I mean, the UTED is literally knocking at our doors as we speak. Should we, because security is not just the job of the police or the DSS or, or the army, it's also our responsibility. Everybody, everybody. What should be our next line of action now that this story or this red alert has been dropped on our laps? People should think back that some things are about to happen and then we should be on our toes. I will remind the people, I will remind people, Nigerians now, permit me to say this. Sometimes when the president was with the, was attending an NBA conference, I think in Port or there, but I would not know again, but within this country, he said something that, look, at times, uh, 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 they can take security above the rule of law. Now, what DSS has blown out, most especially now saying that it's from the executive. But there is, the, but, there is but, but there is no rule of law that has been broken as we Thank speak. You. Are you sure? No rule of law has been broken as we speak? 
Else Azaki have been asked to be released for how long? Uh, Shore have been Shore and the backer have been asked to be released since 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 when? Then look at it. Any government that is not able to ensure social economic well being of the people. It's not a government. Okay, Dr. And we so need to are go. We, are we, what are we saying? Dr. Quickly, one last uh, <laughs> statement before we go. We need to go. We're out of time. What should we do as security conscious Nigerians? Well, I think we should be our brother's keepers. You know? We should I mean, be at a lot with this kind of information that is being disseminated. I mean, and like the um, release already said, parents should rein in their children. I mean, let them know that it is not in your interest to just go and join the bad work going on. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, um, all right. Well, Dr. Larry Bibe and uh, Dayo Kayode are not going anywhere. They're going to still be with us. We'll take a short break when we return. We'll be talking about fresh concerns over our Marjorie system in the North. Stay with us.